So this gaming PC right here, you may recognize it from the recent video we did where it was an under 300 US dollar budget build. However, after I finished benchmarking and presenting the video, I noticed later that night, the build just shut off randomly. And then after that, it started giving out some very weird issues. For instance, the keyboard would shut off sometimes and then the whole build would just freeze after that, it would lock up. And of course the blue screen of death, that came up every now and then. And I realized there was something wrong with this PC and I crossed my fingers, I hope it wasn't an actual hardware problem where if it was, we'd then have to replace that part out. And of course that just costs money, but thankfully it wasn't that. And we're gonna go through today the steps that we took in order to get this build running 100%, especially since I'm gonna flip this and move on with the build onto the next project. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. The first thing you'll notice here is that these power cables are all loose. I actually undid them because I thought I'd try a different power supply. And that was the first thing that came to my mind when it started shutting off randomly. I thought, okay, maybe this used power supply is not good since I have in the past had power supplies that even passed a power supply test meter, but then would later on have a weird fault where the PC would shut off randomly. It is rare, but it can happen. However, once uh, I swapped this power supply out for this one right here, the behavior still continued. The blue screens popped up the random shutting down popped up. And then after that, it was actually pretty consistent to the point where if I booted up Unigine Heaven, I could do one test that would make it pretty much crash all the time. And that was just, yeah, trying to run the Unigine Heaven benchmark. And so after this test, what I did was I thought, okay, maybe it's the CPU speeds. I tried down clocking the CPU, turning off the Intel boost settings, turning off the EIST setting, and even doing something like underclocking the base clock, just 3%, because usually this likes to sit between 97 to 103. That's usually the range for this. So giving it 3% less may just be that whole sweet spot to get the build running fine, especially with, since we're using an i7-3770, and that uh, is an older CPU in itself. So could be sort of running past its use by date. So after that, I was like, well, could it be the motherboard? Could it be the system memory? And so what I managed to do in Windows is I typed in the Windows memory diagnostic tool. And if you run this, you can it'll restart your computer and it'll test out all your system memory and tell you if there's any errors. Now this isn't as thorough as mem test, but I've never had a memory stick that passed this test and was faulty. So I guess that says something for Windows Memory Diagnostic Tool. Usually it takes around 20 to 30 minutes, may take a little bit longer if you've got a lot more memory to go through, but with 16 gigabytes, it takes around 20 to 30 minutes. But after that test, it finished, and then we got back to Windows, PC kept crashing. I thought, okay, it's either now, of course, the motherboard or the CPU. I did rule out the GPU because the GPU, I that day I was playing Apex for a few hours. It's almost certain with GPUs, you'll have a problem with the first 10 minutes of using it on a stressful test or playing games, or indefinitely within the first half an hour, something will go wrong. And usually it's a driver error. The whole system won't actually shut off unless you've got a power supply problem to your graphics card. So that left us now with the motherboard and CPU to go through. And I had this thing in the back of my head. I was like, okay, I took the CPU out, the i7-3770, and I remembered with Ivy Bridge, that's third generation Intel, instead of using solder on the CPU, they actually use a cheap thermal paste. And I do say cheap because this stuff dried out before it was even shipped. So this thermal paste, I remember this stuff causing a few problems. I just didn't think it would cause such irrational behavior on my system. So going through this, what I did was I delittered it. And since I didn't have my tools with me from Australia, I had to kind of resort to using the tripod <laughs> and screwing that off uh, just with like my pliers. And that did the job. It managed to delid the uh, CPU. And then from there we cleaned off the glue and then we put some uh, GD900 on, some AliExpress budget thermal paste. Works absolutely amazing. Definitely recommend this stuff. And then after that we put the CPU back in, booted it all up. And the good news was 
this whole thing started working properly again, the whole PC. And I have tested this now for over a day. And I'm happy to say that this system is running 100%. I have been playing games on it. I actually did the whole GTX 970 video, came into absolutely no problems, not one. So this PC is running 100%. And so now we've fixed the issue and everything is working fine. I will say with PC problems, they can range from so many different things where if you've only through really through experience, you'll get to know what to look out for with a PC, but definitely testing one thing at a time. I never would have thought that the CPU itself would be fine, but the thermal pace would have caused it to be unstable to the point where the temperatures was still okay. And this is where it comes down to you guys will be like, well, Brian, surely you would have tested this in Cinebench and ran the tests and the temperatures, you would have seen that come out. And that's where I did do those tests. I did run Cinebench on that uh, PC. It's one of the first things I do. And the temperatures were absolutely fine. That's what bothers me. And in the games, the temperatures of the CPU were fine. And even after changing the thermal paste, we're not a huge difference in temperatures from what we were getting before with the stock thermal paste. But one thing that I do guess what was happening was that there was a hot spot that wasn't being picked up from the actual temperature sensors on the CPU. And this is the problem that can happen with a CPU, a very rare problem in this case, where changing the thermal paste that covered the whole die allowed it to connect with the integrated heat spreader. And then that then allowed that hot spot to sort of not be a problem anymore, which was very surprising going through the motions. I never thought deleting a CPU that didn't have a problem with bad temperatures to begin with would have solved the issue of stability. So that's one thing to look out for. Very odd problem in the end. And so CPU problems, they can come about. They're not that common, but I will say one thing, the more this older stuff does get used as time goes on, eventually they will meet their maker and they will find the uh, tombstone. So that is the um, unfortunate sort of trajectory of some of these older parts. But one thing is you can always get more life out of them by either lowering the speeds or upping the voltage and they'll last for years even after that. And that's sort of one thing I always test for with the hardware is seeing where the clock speeds versus the default voltages line up with because over time, basically the parts get burnt out, so to speak, and they keep working, but they just require more voltage to run at the same speed because they're degrading over time. Anyway, guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also do keep in mind that this is a very rare problem. It's an extremely weird problem that'll prop up. Most of the time, if there is a problem due to thermal paste between the integrated heat spreader and the silicon itself, that's gonna prop up straight away with temperatures. You're gonna see those temperatures just go sky high straight away and you'll know that's a problem. This itself was just such a rare problem in terms of making a hot spot that I, I was only able to see after actually taking it off and changing the thermal paste and then seeing that the computer was stable after that. Though do keep in mind that only a certain few generations from Intel did carry this thermal paste. For instance, the generation before that, Sandy Bridge, the i7-2600, for example, that used soldering. And then recently with Intel's chips, they've brought soldering back. And then pretty much the majority of AMD chips, I believe they use soldering too. In other words, if you try to de-lid those CPUs, you're actually gonna destroy the CPU in the process. So there is that. And also there's one more thing with the H77 motherboard. We had a budget gigabyte motherboard here today. So for me, I couldn't actually change the CPU core voltage on this motherboard, which I was a little bit surprised because usually most of the H77 motherboards, they will allow you to change the CPU core voltage, but I couldn't change it on this one. So what I did was I underclocked the CPU instead because that voltage is fixed. Underclocking it will then see if it's the CPU just degrading over time. But most of the time you will have with motherboards the ability to change the CPU core voltage. And so you can do that by just simply manually upping that value and that'll allow you to, instead of changing all these other speed settings, you just check if your CPU needs a bump in voltage, perhaps. Anyway guys, with that aside, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Billy Boy, and they ask, the five year warranty sounds good, but how good are they at honoring that? And this is in relation to the Western Digital SN570 video that we did. 
in the recent video. And it says five years limited and professional installation recommended on the box. So it'd be interesting to know. So with the recommended professional installation, that's just a recommendation. That's got nothing to do with your warranty. Uh, in terms of you getting the product itself, the warranty does have the limitation in that if you've used this drive way too heavily over that five years, then what will happen is they'll say, well, look, you've had fair use on this drive, so it's actually gonna fall out of warranty. So I believe they've got their endurance rating there with the terabytes written. So once you go over that limit, then it's out of warranty. But if you're under that limit and the drive fails within five years, you'll get the replacement. I think that's breaking it down in that manner. Um, keep in mind though, if you are doing extreme data intensive work in a professional environment, definitely go for a higher end drive from any of the manufacturers that give you a massive TBW rating. So that's always one thing to look at when you're looking at warranty though. For most casual people, that warranty will be absolutely fine, even if you're doing um, video editing and whatnot. Though for me personally, I do do 4K video editing in really high bit rates. So I do need a drive that is gonna last the distance because I'm constantly dropping uh, probably 100, 200 gigabytes every video on the drive. And so I quickly do get up to that terabytes written uh, quota quite quickly. So it all depends on what you do, but hopefully that solves that question for you. And with that aside, I will catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Also do let us know in the comment section below, have you had any bizarre problems like the one that we saw with this gaming PC right here? Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.